yeah, okay, we had a Keep It True festival. And everybody who watches my show regularly knows that my, the, my favorite band for all time, forever, is, is Manila Abba. Road. Abba, right? What? Abba. Amber? Abba. 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 Oh, Abba. Uh, Abba. Dancing yeah, Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your favorite one. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a cool that's song. But my favorite song is Eagle, you know? Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. But it's true. Manila Road is my favorite band. Every new viewer of the show knows this. And yeah. This is Manila Road. Please introduce yourself. Uh, what's my name? Oh, Mark, Mark, Mark the Shark Shelton. Okay. Vince Goldman, bass. Corey Christner and drums. And Brian Hellroody, Patrick vocals. Okay. You are. Meanwhile, you are, you were very often in Europe. So, uh, what can we expect tonight from Manila Road? I think I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, well, hopefully it's. Uh, it's going to be a great show. I, I know I'm pumped. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Uh, you got Mudfoot? I don't know. We'll <laughs> I'll try to stay in dry. Uh, Manila Road is a band with a very, 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 very long history. Um, when did you start the band? And uh, yeah, please tell us something about the history of Manila Road. Okay. Uh, I started the band right after they invented dirt. And uh, oh, no, wait a minute. That was. When, that was when I was born. That was when you were born. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I started the band in 1977 mm. with uh, Ben Munkers, uh, Scott Park, and Robert Park, yeah. and myself. And I uh, went through lots of band member changes real mm. quick. And uh, uh, finally ended up with a trio, which was Scott Park on bass, and Rick Fisher on drums, and uh, me on guitar and vocals. And that's when we started recording albums, started our own record label, uh, Roadster Records Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was that was the beginnings there. We were more of a, a space rock band yeah. back then. I was really influenced by the likes of Deep Purple, Black Sabbath, Pink Floyd, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Hawkwind. Yeah. And, uh, and we just uh, kept evolving into something else, every album, yeah. it seemed like. And, I think part of that was because of trying to become an epic band because yeah. I was really interested in adventure fantasy and uh, history and mythology and stuff. Yeah. And as we crept farther into the, the epic style, uh, we got heavier and darker. And yeah. it was sort of a natural progression, I guess. The first two albums were Metal and Invasion. When you listen to these albums now, would you say they uh, represent Manila Road today? Not today as much, no. No, I don't think so. But the magic's still there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, elements. Yeah, I mean, we have pieces of it. Yeah, there's so. still elements, and I guess there's one element still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dirt, dirt, dirt. Yeah, dirt. Yeah, the dirt is still there. No, uh, I think uh, I think we'll we'll show tonight maybe, uh, and this goes back to your other question maybe yeah. a little bit, that we still have. Uh, a little bit of that old magic still going yeah. with us too, because uh, the, I think it's the last song we do is uh, Avatar off of the Mark of the Beast project. So oh, you've heard it right here, exclusive. Yeah, this. this I is just got an erection, you know. You can have an erection. Double. Better nice, better nice. You don't get this. You don't get this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mark of the Beast never was a proper album, I no. think. No, originally it was going to be called Dreams of Eschaton. Yeah. And uh, after we got through recording most of it, we didn't even really finish mixing it. Yeah. And I was very uh, depressed with the sound of it and everything. Mm. And for some reason, it just it, it, it seemed like it was too light. And I was, I, it seemed like we were progressing so quickly mm. into a heavier sound and a darker sound. Yeah. And, and uh, so it, we just put it on the shelf and I just left mm. it there. And finally, you know, 20 years after everybody kept on bugging me to put it out, I finally decided to let it get out. Yeah. And at I'm this glad point, he did. Yeah, yes, this I like it. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that album. It's a, it's a great album. There, there was a bootleg version of it before, and I think yeah. this really sucked off the, of the sound quality. Right. But uh, the, the, rem the remaster is very great, I think. It, but, you know, in, in on the turnaround on that, I think uh, w without that bootleg, it yeah. probably wouldn't have been that 
interested for yeah. people to want it. And um, yeah, I think that bootleg is actually what caused everybody I to, really, I think so. to really bug us about releasing okay. it finally. Yeah. So. so then came Crystal Logic, and I think uh, for many people out there, this is the first real Manila Road album because of all the epic stuff. What do you think about Crystal Logic today? Why why has it such a huge uh, impact still today? It made me a fan <laughs> right off the bat. Yeah. Um, I don't know. No, that's hard you know, to say. It, it's always hard. I think it's uh, partly because of what you said. It was where we really started to define yeah. the epic nature of the sound mm. and the, the concept of the band at that yeah. point. So, uh, and uh, we did happen to uh, upon some um, some different sounds that had never been heard before ah. at that point, I think. Uh, but it was it was new and it was heavy, and because we've always sort of produced ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, it never sounds like anybody else. Yeah. And uh, um, but I, I think we just finally started to really get an idea ourselves at that time, mm -hmm. what we were about and what direction we were trying to go. And it was really our first effort at mm. being a conceptual band yeah. and not just a rock and roll band. Yeah, yeah. It was sort of the mark of uh, the history of Manila Road, really. Yeah. Uh, the turnaround, yeah. you know, and over here in Europe, people are very history oriented yeah. and they really like older type of material. Yeah. And um, I think that's why it's been so popular. Yeah. That, that and I think I started dealing with more of, a, of the mythos mm. on that album yeah. and uh, relating like you Brian said to the ancient histories yeah. and stuff like that a little bit more than we did on the first couple of projects. So you couldn't go to anywhere in the city without somebody having that on vinyl <laughs> at the time. I yeah. swear to God, it was everywhere. Except yeah. except for the song "Feeling Free Again." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, sounds uh, like you uh, a bit to me like you wanted to, to have something on the radio. Is it true? Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. 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 Actually, it was. We were stupid enough to try that at that point. And, <laughs> okay. and I've regretted it ever since because I didn't, you know, even today it just irks me to think that I said the line, you know, hey baby, <laughs> <laughs> in a song. You know, so. But you have also the song Dreams of Eschaton on it and this is an absolute masterpiece. So uh, are this, uh, was this a song made from leftovers from the Mark of the Beast album? Because uh, of the same title, you know? No, well, actually what happened there uh, was I was so into the concept of the Dreams of Eschaton yeah. concept that since we didn't put out that album, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I decided just to condense it, condense it down to yeah. one song. Okay. And so that's how that song came about, yeah. actually. And, uh, but I don't, think, I don't think we do the song as well as uh, uh, that band Byron does. They, yeah. they do it better than we do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to cut it out, no. <laughs> no don't, but you, you don't cut anything from this. <laughs> <laughs> he he don't like <laughs> apples, I know. <laughs> Doctors. But we have to go on to open the gates now. There was a new drummer, Randy Folks, uh, and I think he uh, make uh, new uh, standards to the band yeah, because yeah. of his uh, vi virtual, not virtual. Uh, What's your favorite drummer? Huh? <laughs> I like him a lot. Yeah, yeah I know yeah. you do. All his breaks and all this stuff. This guy's just as good, though. He really <laughs> I is. know. I saw him live. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, your style changed again on "Open the Gates." Uh, it was more heavy uh, sounds, uh, songs like uh, heavy metal to the world with all the double bass. Uh, was this planned like this, or was it an yeah, evolution? It, it, it was a part of our evolution, and uh, uh, at the time, what really happened was, you know, I kept on trying to get Rick to do the, the heavier, darker stuff with us, yeah. and he really wasn't into it. But he didn't want to stop us from going where we mm -hmm. wanted to go. And so he opted to bow out of the band, but he actually worked with us as sound crew yeah, and yeah. light crew and stuff for oh, years okay. after that. Yeah. So it wasn't a bad going away. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't a parting of the ways or a, a, you know an argument or anything mm -hmm. like that. Nothing like that happened. It was uh, just that he knew that uh, this was where we were going naturally mm -hmm. and because Crystal Logic was a, a difficult album for him to, yeah. to keep up with where we were going on yeah. and when I started writing the, the music for Open the Gates uh, I kept on asking him well can't, can't we do this one faster can you do more double bass in there <laughs> okay. and stuff and it, he just really struggled with it and 
eventually got to the point where he didn't want to play it that way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he bowed out and we went looking for a new drummer, found Randy. Mm -hmm. And with Randy. It was about 20 seconds in, into his uh, audition, audition yeah. that we was like, this is the guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, you know, I, we went to his house and he had this huge drum set, you know. Oh, you already had it back then? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. not with the cage yet, yeah, but, okay. but, uh, but he had the big drum set. And, you know, we said, well, just, uh, you know, just play sit down and, you know, <laughs> play something that has double kicks in it. And uh, he just sat down and basically what he did was the opening for heavy metal to the world. Yeah. He just started, blah, 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 yeah. you know. <laughs> and, and it was like, like you said, about 20 seconds, we were just standing there. I looked at Brian, Brian looked at me, and we thought, this, <laughs> this is it, this is yeah. it. And so we actually had to, hey, you can stop now. <laughs> you can stop, stop, stop. He, he played so loud and, and so radically yeah. that uh, just just the presence alone was impressive. Yeah. You yeah. know, it was like, wow. Uh, so, anyway. The only person I've ever seen to play drums like Randy Fox is Keith Moon. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, on but the old um, footage. You Red, know, Red, but, but Randy uh, never had goldfishes in his. Uh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. If he, he would have had time, he would have had. <laughs> um, but anyway, anyway, that's how we got Randy, yeah. and uh, uh, he was a, a thoroughly great addition to us at that time, yeah. because it allowed us to adventure into the heavier, faster realm that we were that we were evolving into. And it uh, really got more uh, progressive, I think, with uh, the next album, the Deluge. Uh, what do you say, the Deluge or the Deluge or the Deluge? Deluge. Yeah, or Deluge. Learning English if, with if Manila from, Road. If you're from Kansas, <laughs> it's Deluge. Ah. If it, if if you're gonna say it properly, it's Deluge. I okay. Deluge. So deluge. I believe it's a French word. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the, a, the big wave. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. Um, uh, when I put on this record, I will never forget it. Uh, there was this very progressive start, you know, and uh, you, you played it the same on the live uh, LP. So, uh, did you record the basics live back then on Open the Gates or the Daily? Uh, basically, we went in and recorded everything all at the same time at oh. first. Okay. And then, probably, usually, what we do is we just keep on playing the song until. Yeah until we knew that the drum part was right. Ah, okay. And then we'd keep the drum part and we'd, you know, delete all of the other stuff and go ah. back and re-record the, yeah. the guitar parts and the bass part and the vocals. And so. There's so much dynamics in, in, in these songs. Uh, did you play on click track back then? No, no. never. This is cool. <laughs> because uh, I think the, only, the first time we ever used a click track on anything was in uh, uh, the recording of the uh, Courts of Chaos. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, Chords of Chaos. It's uh, an album which is very different to all the previous albums. Um, is it true that there's drum computer on it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, uh, he didn't actually play the album. Yeah. Uh, he took samples of his drums. Yeah. And then he programmed all of his parts. Yeah. In, into uh, note for note. Yeah, note yeah. For, you know, stroke for stroke. But the thing is, is he could, he could actually play everything. He was just wanting to experiment with the new technology of recording okay. at that yeah. time. And, uh, and uh, if you hear like uh, a lot of the different bands back then, they were going to that style. Uh, a lot of you know recording, Even you know, more so now because yes, of the triggers that are yeah. used, right. and samples yeah. that are used. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, now now we're in this realm of where our drum mixes sound so different than everybody else now yeah. because we still just record the drums raw and live. Yeah. And, you know, this is absolutely you know. great. <laughs> so we, we don't use triggers yeah. in, in the studio. We record everything you hear on Gates of Fire yeah. and, and uh, Voyager is just him and him yeah. alone. So yeah, This is great. Because that's yeah. the dynamics that uh, um, uh, is missing on Mary, uh, many recent records now today. But back to uh, Kurtz of Chaos, you made a cover version. I think it's the only Manila Road cover, uh, uh, cover version Manila Road ever did. Uh, DOA yes. from the band Blood Rock. Blood Rock, right. yeah. So you know Blood Rock. It's, uh, it's well, was it a favorite I, from you? Well, I, I guess I know one of them personally because I had to deal with oh. them to get the rights of, uh, okay. of the song. But uh, uh, I, I just, we were looking for a cover version to do yeah. of something. 
and none of us could agree on the song <laughs> until we finally agreed on DOA because mm -hmm. it was and had keyboards in it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Randy this, loves and Randy to play keyboards. Loved to try and play keyboards and drums at the same time. Phenomenal. And it was one song that Phenomenal. we could actually Not do yes. that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, he yeah, did it like did this. It. Yeah. After he got the cage, the big yeah. cage yeah. that he had, he mounted the keyboards right over here. And He'd also oh, experiment oh, with soloing yeah, he, his guitar yeah, and, he, and playing drums. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Which was fucking crazy, you know? But anyway, yeah, we. It was just a song that we thought was uh, something that we could add something to and change a little bit with yeah. a heavier guitar sound yeah. because, because, um, <laughs> you know, that you, you know, that you this, um, it was, it was, uh, it was primarily an organ type of keyboard song yeah. when it was done by Blood Rock, yeah. and yeah, and so. We turned it into something where it still had the keyboard intro mm -hmm. and stuff in there, but gave it more of a heavier guitar yeah. crunch sound mm -hmm. and uh, tried to reinvent the song a little mm -hmm. bit, you know. He must be a <laughs> Such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Um, uh, he has to, she has to change the cassette now. Okay. <laughs>